will not suffer. No. I will not beg. No. The Lord is my Yeah.
you on your cell phone, could you put it on silent or break so it does not disturb us? Amen. Amen. God 
external news. And God is on all of this. So as we gather today, let us Lord, we just want to honor you, mighty God, for your presence that is here with us this afternoon, Lord. And so, Lord, as we get in this fashion, Lord, we pray, my God, that your spirit, Lord, passes all understanding, Lord, will rest upon us like a dog, Lord. We pray, my God, that you lead and direct, mighty God, everything that is about to say, mighty God. We pray, my God, with that you Lord, mighty God, and almighty God. We pray that you touch, right now, mighty God, those who are grieving in the morning, Lord. We
And our first lesson comes to us from Psalm 160. It will be reading from verse 1 to verse 5, and this will be done by Sister Azalea Sims. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And we read thus I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death come past me, and the pains of hell that hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Five and last, gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Here in the reading of God's holy word, we honor it by saying, Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if you notice in your program, there's a hymn, right? We're going to be doing it at this moment. I will sing of the goodness of God. And right now, we are the same of the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. In spite of. So we are going to stand and we are going to blend our voices together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I love you, Lord. For oh, you may.
pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, praise God. Our second lesson comes to us from 1 Corinthians 13. Reading from verse 1 to 10. This will be done by Sister Danica Bell. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 to 10. Grandma, I'm happy. 
and he's a happy person for real. He's very happy. He said, I'm happy. I have a nice young lady who I'm going to make my wife. And after I get married, I'm going back in my church. But how oh, oh, many of us know today that sometimes there is no tomorrow? So, so I just want to say to all the young people in here who think you have time, don't wait too long. Because nobody knows when this is going to happen to any one of us. You know, I, we, myself and my husband, we produce 42 grandchildren. And uh, Buju, Corey, definitely you hear that money. There's a special place in my heart for all of you, but Buju, just carry a special place in my heart. He's one of the kindest. He cut my lawn, he came over, he shoveled my snow, you know, he plowed my garden. He lived with me for about three years. And I have to give you this little joke about Buju. You know, could you live with me? Never ask him for a dime. But when he worked and he feel like, he would come and say, Grandma, you want money? I said, you have money? You give me money? Yes. Then my husband, nephew, came to live with us. So, and he's a older person. So I said to Buju, Buju, now that my pawn is here, I can't ask pawn to contribute and you don't. And I said, you have to contribute something because I would look like a hypocrite. Okay? And he walked all over upon it. Because he said, you come here, go back where you're coming from. It's not just quite the business. Because whenever you took in no money, but as you come here, no me if you give money. So we should have come where you come from. And make me not figure grandma no money. That's who would you hear. Kind. Very kind. Very sweet young man. So I'm asking you all to pray for us because we miss a great person. So just pray for us. I don't know when this pain will be over, but just pray, pray for us. God bless you. Love you all. Amen. Bless the Lord. Praise God. We're going to take for the children in this order. Sister Shirley Morris and Sister Susan Salinda. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, there I wanted to speak, but I guess. He changed his mind. That's all right. Um, I wanted to go very slow because I'm waiting on my grandson who I see come in the gate. In the
in the chat. That's my lifeline, my heartbeat, and so is this other grandmother's lifeline. That's Miss Diane Heartbeat. That's Erinica's only child. That's the only one. Dear very Grandma, I love you. Mr. Alright, 
He said, Jeremiah, good me and Erica have shared custody. Me having one time Erica have one time mummy. Boom, that good. But anyway, to say this to say that my son was the life of the family. Yes, he was. <laughs> there was never like a sad moment with Buju. Like we would say, that's the only person who have 10 cents in his pocket and be happy. Yeah, because he nothing's but nothing would bother Buju. Nothing me and him would just fire off and like me and him tear down and cuss with your mom. All right, me and the yard, me and you're good. <laughs> and me say, yeah, mom, I'm good. You say, you know, say, I love you and me and your best picnic. But me not make you talk and get off of your chest. <laughs> but this boy is something else. At the next door, he planted a tree for Pastor James and he planted one for us. And he said, there is one in the backyard, but you have three more, three or more, and going to feel you yard. It's a tough year that about that. And he he's the kind of person, he, he will not say, I'm asking you, because he feels entitled. Like everything we have is his. Um, where we just reminded us, no that put you got everything I feel, but <laughs> um there's Kamani and there's Jeremiah I'm worried, so sorry, you have to cheer, you have to cheer. But let me tell you, I could talk from now till tomorrow or next week or next year or 10 years from now. This boy is going to be missed. He's going to, we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him. But thank God he left a son. Yes. And I, 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 I almost said publicly, Erica, Miss Dion, we have our differences, but please, I'm begging you, don't leave me home. Don't leave us out. You know? We, we can do this together. Um, and I want to thank, like, my husband's best friend and his wife and our goddaughter is here. My neighbor who live across the street. My, 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 my best, bestie, bestie. My, my, my not so bestie who used to run me when I used to follow me and then back in the days is here. Um, I have Sister Nesbeth, I have my cousins from Turks and Caicos, I have my cousins from England, and a whole bunch of other, oh, I see Kiki, that's Buju's friend and her boyfriend, and thank you guys for coming. Thank you so much. Some are still on their way, but they will come and look at the two because we're not going to wait any longer. So thank you for listening, and thank you for coming, and thank you for sharing. And I'm going to try my best to hold it, because I've been holding it until I see my grandson, but God is still a good God. Yes, yes. yes. And he will carry us through this. Yes. Nine.
And when I try to find a song to sing, because, you know, I love to sing in my own little way. The Lord said, sing this one until then. My sister and my brother, you have to keep on doing what you are doing. That's all I have to say. My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heart
if God of praise is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We're going to be lifting an offering at this time. And there's a saying that says, give until it hurts. Amen. So we're going to ask you to just worship the Lord with your offering at this time. As we sing the name, as I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but the Lord leads me on through it. I must do it. Praise God. As I journey through this land, I'm singing as I go. I get so still.
to his parents, Shirley and Delroy. I trust you will rest in the assurance that our Heavenly Father reminds us in Psalm 34 and verse 18 that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in his spirit. To his siblings, hold on to the eternal hope promised in John 11, verse 25 to 26. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. To his grandparents and extended family, Isaiah 25 and verse 8 reassures us that he will swallow up death forever. The Lord God will wipe away all tears from our faces. Would you? In life, we love you dearly. In death, we love you still. In our hearts, you hold a place no one will ever fill. For those we love never go away. They simply walk beside us, unseen, unheard, but always near. Sleep well, Delroy St. Patrick Morris Jr. And may God's perpetual light shine on you. For now we must thank God your life was a blessing. Hold on to your memories as a treasure and hope for the resurrection when we will see you again. We will always love you. the Lord. Praise God. Now we we'll have a selection by Sister Smiley and the companion committee. Sister Monica Smiley and the companion committee.
send you a microphone system that will be yours specifically. Amen. Amen. I'm sure my boys are listening online, so Orlando is probably already starting to order it as soon as he hears me speaking about that. Amen. Amen. I know he would prefer we have a conversation about air conditioning, but I don't know. We'll have that conversation offline. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I just had to say that to him. I just wanted to, to bless him. Bless him publicly. Amen. Amen. Tell the Lord, thank you. Let's pray. Would you stretch your hand towards your servant one more time? Gracious Father, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for this incredible privilege that you bestowed upon me that I might be called a child of God. To all that are gathered here, I know, Father, that the same sense of gratitude fills this room. So, Father, I pray that you would stretch your hand towards us in these moments. Begin with me, Lord. Wash us. Cleanse us. Forgive all of our sins. Pardon all of our transgressions. Blot out every sin. Even now, my Father, would you fill us with your Holy Spirit once again. Capture the hearts of the unconverted. Draw the attention of the distracted. Save. 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 Souls that are perishing. Father, may your word go forth with life-changing power. In this moment, I ask that you would help me to deliver this text with power and precision. Help me to think clearly, to speak fluently, to pronounce words and syllables properly, to explain and to teach this gospel effectively. Gracious Father, thank you for hearing our prayer. For we pray in no other name but the name of Jesus. Let all of God's children say, Amen. 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 And amen. amen. I feel like I've already preached Banjan's Banjan. That's my name for him. Is I understand his grandpa used to call him Banjan, and I got all of that. And I'm the only one that calls him Banjan. All right. So just uh, if you all hear me say that name as we talk, it's Puju that I'm referring to. Amen. amen. I feel like I've already preached his home going in Connecticut. As I told you all, this is the first time that I'm doing it twice, uh, preaching in committal as well. So I, I want to pause in this moment and share a word with you that I felt the Lord has dropped into my heart for this waiting audience. While we were in Connecticut, we shared with you from the book of Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, and we called on all that had gathered to make that U turn. Today I want to go to another book of the prophets, the book of Jeremiah, also the 18th chapter. I would like to read from verse, from chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. I know you've been getting a workout today, you've been up and down a lot on your feet, but we are a spiritual, full gospel, Pentecostal church, are we not? So to church we get our exercise, right? We stand up, sit down, stretch, clap our hands, dance, shout. So one more time, would you slip to your feet? Let us reverence the Lord for the reading of his holy word. Amen. Your pastor gave me all the time that I needed to, to just go for it. So I never heard anybody interrupt the party and ask, when is the party going to be over? Never heard them ask the DJ, what time? I always hear them saying one more free road, two more songs, play it again. And I'm in Jamaica, they have something y'all do. Pull up and keep my pressure. When it gets sweet, amen. They want it to get sweeter, amen. Well, pull up, amen. It's time for the word. Amen. The Bible says these words The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. 
And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord. Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. I want to encourage you today with these words, stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. Can I say that again? Stay on the wheel. Oh, I think somebody not quite catch that. She caught that already. Stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. I know we get COVID, but if you don't mind talking to the person next to you, turn and tell somebody, stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. You can be seated. As I look at this particular text today, I want to remind you as I continuously tell the congregation of the cathedral, it is very important that the preacher remain true to the text. We cannot take the text and make it say what we want to say, invent ideas, opinions, strategies, thoughts, just to make you feel good to fill our churches and fill our coffers. Amen, somebody. It is better to preach the truth. Amen. Yes. And have everybody upset with you. Yes. Than to tell a lie. To befriend, to befriend the whole world. Yes. So it is important that preachers and teachers look at the text. And remain true to it. Tell the story of the text. Yes. And if in telling the story we can find some lessons. That we can deliver to you. Thanks be to God. This is the case of the text that I'm looking at today. I've never used it at a home going service. But I want you to know that I believe that this is the word for this moment. Because yeah. I believe that some of you are being tempted to get off the wheel. And I want you to know that you should consider the importance of being on the wheel. We'll get there in a moment. But I believe in all my heart that right now, right here, today, in this moment, you've encountered a divine moment. Every person here today is not here by chance. I want to say that again. You are not here by chance. There is no coincidence or happenstance with God. He is precise. He's meticulous. He is sovereign. He's in control. And the Bible says the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. But you might be saying, but I'm not a good person. I'm still in the world. I don't go to church. I don't live for Jesus. He doesn't order my steps. So maybe I'm here by accident. The devil is a liar. He's been ordering your steps long before you came. I don't know about you, but everything that happened in my life brought me to the moment that I gave my life to Jesus. Surrendered my life to Him and began to live this beautiful life in Christ. So I want you to be aware that where you are right now is a God-appointed moment. In this moment, you might be wondering, well, preacher, how could it be a God moment and things are so wrong? I can imagine in the back of Delroy's mind and Shirley's mind said, wait a minute, a God moment? This? Uh, listen, that's why we're going to talk about the wheel today. That's why we're going to talk about that. So I want you to understand something that no matter how bad things get, God has a plan for your life. But you can't just embrace any and any kind of life. You've got to embrace the life that Christ calls us to. The problem with this particular text, as I see it, is that Israel heard the word of the Lord and immediately proceeded to reject the word. 
When Jeremiah presented this text, he would go on to tell them, listen, the Lord is saying, if a nation sins against him, and he plans destruction, and they repent, he will also repent. He said it in Jeremiah, and he said it here again. And he said it in Ezekiel, and he says it here again through Jeremiah. And when Jeremiah presented to the nation of Israel, that God is saying, if you turn, you will live. They frowned and said, how could this be so? I want to caution you, don't begin to say that in your mind. There is no amount of sin you've committed, no amount of wrong you've done, no, matter, uh, no amount of bad you've done in your life that is too much for the blood of Jesus. The songwriter said it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. This blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It doesn't matter how vile, how wicked, how sinful, how troublesome you be. Pumping. 
and away at the wheel, and in his hand is a lump of clay. That lump of clay is you and I. Yeah. Can I talk to church? Yeah. And I want you to know that the Lord is going to teach Jeremiah what he wants to do with Israel by causing Jeremiah to observe what the potter does with the clay at the wheel. I'm finding out. If you really want to know what God wants to do with you, check out the parables, investigate the narratives, just really dissect the stories, and the more you learn about the story, the more you will learn about your God. Amen. So he is there, and, and God tells him that I want you to observe what's going on, and, and just how the potter handles the clay, that's how I want to handle Israel. So let's talk about it. There are a few things I want to throw at you quickly and, and then we'll be ready to move on. Number one, I want you to pay attention that the clay, the clay, the clay, which is you and I, metaphorically, you and I, the clay mother started off in the potter's hand. See, you've got to start off in the hand That's when the storm would matter. That's when the earthquake would matter. That's when the fire would matter. That's when the famine, oh, the drought, none of it will matter. You've got to start off in the potter's hand. So the clay starts in the potter's hand and, and it would seem as though the potter had a particular direction for the clay. It might have been a vase, I don't know. But the potter had a plan for the clay. So he begins to pump at the wheel and he begins to mold the clay. So number one, remember, the clay starts in the potter's hand. But secondly, very important, very important, I want you to pay attention. The clay not the potter. Oh, yeah. The clay, the clay went bad in the potter's hand. But the potter remained at the wheel with the clay in his hand. Can I talk to you? You see, the problem is not with God. The problem is with us. We blame God for everything when the fault is really ours. How could God let this happen? God didn't let anything happen. We let it happen. I shared with you with the church at the home going in Connecticut. And let me say it again. The reason bad things happen in the world is because sin is present in the world. And until sin is no more problems, pain, death, tragedy, calamity, it will all come. Stop blaming God. Blame sin. Sin is the problem. Sin is the problem. So the clay starts in the potter's hand, but remember that the clay is the thing that went bad in the potter's hand. It wasn't the potter, it was the clay. The clay had some serious flaws in it. But here's the thing that I want you to know. Your life might not be going in the direction you thought it should have gone in. But remember this, what you missed yesterday it's past and it's gone. It's over. It is time to look ahead and wonder what is the Lord up to today. Yesterday is gone. I feel my helper. I feel my helper. So notice the clay goes bad. I want to get through this quickly. This usually takes me an hour, hour and a half. So I've got two sessions to preach. This message when I get there. We're going to do it in just a few more minutes today. Watch this. The clay starts in the potter's hand. The clay goes bad in the potter's hand. That means the clay started off in the right direction, Brother Junior. The clay was headed where God wanted it to go. But all of a sudden, it faltered in his hand. It messed up in his hand. Oh, I feel like preaching a little bit past the day. It's okay. I'm wondering if anybody's 
you've been walking with the Lord and all of a sudden you messed up a little bit you you, you fell down you you blew it you now the church folk talking about you now the pastor not talking to you anymore because you just went and did it too many times I'm wondering if there's anybody who's been messing up Thank you. See, we, we, we have 
have one set of plan for our children, but God might have a whole another plan. And it is time that as good Christian parents, that we give our children over to Jesus and the Lord have your way in their lives. Do with them whatever you want. They don't have to become what I want as long as they become what you want. What you want. Here's the thing. The design of the clay was from the potter's mind. The clay had nothing to do with it. See, that's the thing about God. He has a direction and a plan for your life. Our job is to get on the wheel and stay in his hand and let God do what he wants to do with our lives. But let me bring this home. The final thing that I want to point out to you about this is where we start. Stay on the way. See, every time I've gone to this text before, I've talked about the wheel, but I've never focused on the wheel. I've always stayed focused on the Father's hand, and rightfully so, because that's Jesus' hand, right? That's the Master's hand. But here's the thing. The wheel represents your life, your place of process. It represents Everything that you gotta go through, it's your place of purpose, your place of existence. The clay is sitting on the wheel. Now I don't know if the father was going too fast or too slow or what was happening. The clay got all confused, got discombobulated, got messed up, and all of a sudden the father continues to shape that vessel into something that he could use. But here's the beauty about it. Life continues on. Life continues on. You're going to have to go through some pain. You're going to go through some suffering. I am not going to promise you that when you become a Christian, everything will be hunky-dory, A-okay, perfect. No, that's not how it works. I can promise you this, though. If you follow Jesus, your life will get a whole lot better. You will learn how to appreciate the little that you have. You will, you will learn people's uh, goods and property. Can I talk to you? Uh, your life will get better, but through the process, uh, you will learn how to embrace where you are. Amen. Stay on the wheel. That wheel kept on turning. I don't know what pain you're facing. We know the pain that the Morris family is facing. But I want to say to the Morris family, to the Ranger family, to the Patton family, I want to say to all the friends, all the brothers, all the uncles and aunts and nephews, and I want to say to Jeremiah, and I, I want to say to all of you, stay on the wheel, stay there. But if you stick it to living the life, the life might not always be easy. It may not always go the way you want it to go. But if you keep living this Christian life with your life in the hands of the Master, I promise you, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God will gather around. We will tell the story how we overcome.
was born of a virgin, crucified on a cross, buried in a tomb. He was raised from the grave. He ascended to heaven. He sent the Holy Spirit. Because of this, my sins are forgiven. I am saved. Heavenly Father, I surrender to you. You come into my life. Give me a clean heart, a new mind, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I surrender to you. And I thank you for receiving me. From this day on, I will live for you. Give me power to make good on this commitment. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray for these, your people. I pray for every person joining us online, this congregation here today, inside and outside. Would you have your way in their lives? Would you bless them? Would you strengthen them? Every person that might have surrendered to you for the first time or recommitted another time, those that have been walking with you, we pray for the entire body of Christ. Have your way in their lives. Father, I pray for all of the family of the Dell, Shirley, the children, grandchildren, all of the family, the Rangers, the Pat, the Patterns. I pray for this entire family that the peace that surpasses all understanding will rest upon them. You will bless their lives, strengthen them as we prepare to face this most difficult moment in front of us. I pray that you will strengthen us along the way. Bless us along the way. And help us to reach the finish line. Father, we commit this time, we commit this space, and all these people back into your hands. And I thank you for them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray that the church say, Amen. Amen. And amen. Would you clap your hands and receive Pastor Pastor?
Okay, everyone, please join me on the next link for the graveside. Please join me on the next link for the graveside. I'm going to close this segment for now.